I'm Tony Keith, the Christmas Light Guy. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do a quick setup of the Quinn LED Dig Quad version 3 controller with WLED firmware and how to control it in X-Lights. This was my first experience with any Quinn LED hardware. I've been wanting to test out a Dig Quad, but they were out of stock for a while until I recently saw a post on a Facebook group advertising a few for sale. When I messaged to purchase one, I said I'd like to purchase one to create a tutorial video. By the time I inquired, all the units had been sold. However, the seller, Sean T, was kind enough to ship me one of his backup units to borrow so I could create this video. Thank you, Sean T. This is one of the reasons I love the Holiday Lights community. Here is what the Dig Quad looks like. This one has an external antenna and is mounted in a nice acrylic case. It has very large input power terminals for the positive and negative input. This board can be run from 5 volts to 24 volts DC. Just make sure to match the voltage to your pixel voltage. It has five independent fuses. These are the larger automotive size, not the smaller ones, with seven outputs. Two of those outputs each share a fuse. The extra fuse outputs could be used to power a device or for power injection purposes. I've attached four pigtails so that I can connect to my pixels. The black, the ground goes to the black terminal, the positive goes to the red terminal, and the data, being yellow in my case, goes to the blue terminals marked LED1 through LED4. The dig quad has many other features. I won't address these in the tutorial, but they're definitely noteworthy. For example, high current handling, up to 30 amps, onboard temperature sensor, uh, six GPO pins that could be used for such things as audio, relay control, IR control, or I2C displays. It also works with most currently available LED strings and strips or panels. Now let's see what it takes to set it up. This dig quad wasn't running the latest version of WLED, so I'll quickly show you how to install the latest version of WLED. Your dig quad may come with WLED pre-installed and the latest version, so this step may not be necessary for you. I've opened up the WLED project website in a browser. Let's take a look at the installation process. First, click on the Basics menu, then Click on Installation. For this installation, I will use a pre-built binary. So I will click on Install WLED Binary. Then we're going to scroll down to Flashing Method 3, which is the Home Flasher method. Click on the link. When you click on the link, it will open up the GitHub Home Flasher repo site. Notice the latest version is 1.4.0. If you scroll down, you will see that there's different files for different operating systems. I'm on a Mac, so I'll go ahead and download the Mac OS version. As you can see, it downloaded. Now we're going to go back to the WLED site, and we're going to click here to go to the repo. So it has opened up the repo site for WLED. We're going to scroll down and find the releases. Click on latest. The latest is 0.13.1. So I will download the ESP32 binary file for a dig quad. So go ahead and download that. Now let's take a look at the files that I've downloaded. So I'll go open up this for the file download directory. Notice that the WLED is a binary file and the ESP home flasher is a tar file. I'll go ahead and extract the tar file and it opened up the ESP home flasher program. Okay, I will start the ESP home flasher program. Give it just a second. Notice the flasher program must detect your USB to serial port driver. If it doesn't, 
you may need to install the drivers for your operating system. Please check with other available references since this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So next I will select the firmware by pressing the Browse button. Click on the WLAD firmware. Open. Next I'll flash the ESP32 by clicking the Flash ESP button. You should see console activity log similar to this. The Flasher program will first erase the Flash memory, then upload and write the firmware to the ESP32. This may take a minute to complete, so be patient. Once the flashing is complete, I will go ahead and close the Home Flasher program and the file manager. I will open up my Wi-Fi network window. Notice there's an SSID named WLEDAP. I'll go ahead and connect to the WLED access point. It will pop up a window and we're going to go to the Wi-Fi settings. I will go ahead and enter my show network in the SSID and password. Try that again. I will also change the DNS address here just to make it easier. I'll call it WLED quad and I'll move down to the AP SSID and I'll call it uh, WLED AP quad. All other uh, settings should be fine. So go ahead and say, press the send and connect. It'll send the information. Now I'll go ahead and close the window. Remember I configured the Wi-Fi settings to connect to my show network. Currently my laptop is connected to my home Wi-Fi network. Let me connect to my show network. My show network is called LS for Light Show. If you've configured WLED to use your home network, then you wouldn't have to switch Wi-Fi networks. Now I will open up another browser tab and type in the DNS address for the DIG, DIG quad, which is HTTP WLED-quad.local. This will pull up the WLED UI interface. Now I can test to see if the WLED software in the DIG quad is working. First, let me turn off the power and then go to the configuration menu. Next, I will go to LED preferences to configure the LED outputs to match the pixels that are connected. First, I'll turn off the automatic brightness limiter. I know that I have enough power from my power supply to supply the current necessary. The DIG quad is connected to four 100 pixel strands, one on each of the four outputs. So I'll configure output one. Um, first, I'm going to change the RGB color order. I know it's RGB. Next, set the length to 100. And then for output 1, it's GPIO 16. So this needs to be set to 16. So that's the first output. To add more outputs, you click on the plus sign. I'm going to do that three times. And then I'll go back to 2 and I'll configure it once again. Change the color, change the length, and this is GPIO 3. Okay, next, set this to RGB 100, GPIO 1, and the last one, RGB. 
100 and GPIL 4. Everything else can stay the same. We're going to save. We're going to go back. Go back to the main menu. Let me start my video recorder. Okay, my video is enabled. I will turn on the power and see what happens. Okay, we have orange, red, blue, green. We have brightness control. Yes. Let's go check out an effect just to make sure. Let's go down to something like um, Meteor. Let it cycle through all 400 and everything is working. Okay, now I've verified everything is working. Let's see what the setup looks like in X-Lights. I've opened up X-Lights and I'm on the Controllers tab. I've already manually set up the controller using the Add Ethernet button. I've named the controller Dig Quad. Named the put the description in as Dig Quad. Set the vendor to WLED. Set the model to Quinn LED Dig Quad. Set the variant to ESP32. I've set the IP address to the correct IP address for the unit. I've set the protocol to DDP and I've manually set the channels to 1200. I've also turned off the auto layout models and auto size. There seems to be a bug with this version of WLED firmware and X lights to auto configure WLED. This isn't a problem since we've already configured the outputs manually for each of the four 100 pixel strands using the WLED UI. Next, moving over to the layout tab. For this demo, I've modeled four strands of 100 pixels each using single lines named single line one through four. Moving back to the controllers tab, I will click on the visualize button and you can see the single strands have been assigned to each of the ports. One, two, three, four are assigned to port one, two, three, four. Okay, I'll close this. Notice I did not upload the output. Moving over to the sequencer tab, I've already created a 30 second sequence with some simple effects, each effect being five seconds long. Let me start my video recording again. One second. Okay, video recording is started. Let me enable the output. Reset, and I'm going to start playing the sequence. The first, se first effect is a single strand with different colors and different speeds. Next is the marquee leading into a fade up and then going into a fade down. Next is a curtain effect where it's closing and opening and then into a crossfade from white to different colors. As I've demonstrated in this tutorial, the dig quad was pretty simple to set up and configure and drive in X-Lights. I can't wait to get my own dig quad to incorporate into my holiday display. Some of the features of the dig quad that I really like are it has four outputs, has three different antenna options. You can get it with an onboard, an external, or onboard with an ethernet add onboard. It's pretty economical. Current prices are $42 to $50 depending on antenna options. That's less than $12.50 per port. I like the fact that it uses standard size auto fuses. I do not like the smaller fuses for some reason. And it has larger input power terminals and those terminals have covers. But I think one of my favorite features is the extra fused power outputs. The fused outputs can be used for power injection. This means 
no need for additional power injection distro boards. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new from it. If you did and would like to see more tutorials like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. All you have to do is press the subscribe button below.